We now bring you the program that brings together leading personalities, representative insights, all together in a meaningful and delightful conversations as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Hosted by breakthrough millennial boomer Gracie Ventuela. Only here on V81 Radio. Hello, everyone. It's 6 o'clock once again. Welcome to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie here on V81 Radio Worldwide. As always, our Sundays here in the station has a power-packed lineup of shows. And tonight, certainly we are going to have such an interesting topic with some fantastic guests from the world of Philippine fashion. The pandemic hit us with a big wallop last March. And to this day, we know that fashion, one of the most important industries of this country, was very badly hit. With all the retail stores shut down and all the production facilities came to a halt, even the world of fashion show production naturally followed suit. However, the creative spirit and the creative managers of this industry will not be uh, silenced by this pandemic. They um, are able to come together and as a force to be reckoned with, they are going to resurrect the fashion industry and we're going to learn about their strategies and how they're doing it. However, any great movement starts from a big idea. And my first guest tonight certainly is a fantastic source of very creative ideas. Having been in the fashion show scene for many years, he is responsible for some of the most memorable fashion presentations this country has ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to have with us my dear friend, Jackie Aquino. Hi, Gray. Hi. Hello, Jackie. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thank you for having us. Well, it's such an honor to have you here tonight. And um, I know that we are going to have a very interesting conversation with some of our colleagues in the creative side of fashion, because these are what I would call you would be one of them, um, set of movers and shakers of the industry. Thank you. Yes. Anyway, Jackie, I know that when the pandemic hit, you were there in your place and all your shows ground to a halt. How, how did you cope? Prayers. The, you know, you resort to prayers. The first few days were really hard. Um, and then it goes to a point where you start screaming at the TV because it's all bad news. So what? You decide. Will you sit down and, and pity yourself? I decided to do something. It all boils down to that. It's either you make good use of your time or you just spend your time in bed and gain sideways. Like, well, it also <laughs> happened. Well, I know you are a very energetic person and your creative spirit will not be quashed easily by this pandemic. So I know that you came up with a very interesting idea uh, and of course, with a little help from the friends in the industry, could you tell us a little bit about your uh, fantastic video production? Okay, uh, when the pandemic started, of course, I'd be, who do you rely on your friends? So I would right. call my BFF, Randy Ortiz, who's also a very good friend of yours. Yes. And he told me already from the start, from day, I think day two, he said, why yes. don't you do a video of something or, you know, to entertain or something like that? But it took about a month and a half before we finally realized it's time because we sorry this was in march so towards yes. may first week of may i decided why just not do a love letter to the industry uh, that yes. has given me so much and with with the dear help from my dearest friends randy selma annie pen marco we decided why not just do a video and make it make it organic. Just ask the designers to send you what they can and we'll put it together. And then Selma gave me a beautiful title. Why not call it Passion for Healing? Fantastic. Because the, old, 
yeah, that's the only way we could heat ourselves. So why not do it through fashion? That's why, yes. that's how the new normal fashion for healing was born. And for the benefit of our audience, fashion for healing has become a very famous video now on the internet. And I'm so proud that Jackie, you were able to pull it off because when I saw that video, it really gives the industry, the fashion industry, a lot of hope. And certainly with that, that sparked a lot of people to think about what ought to be the next step because this new normal is going to be with us for quite a while. And that video really gives everyone in the industry some sense of hope. Oh, thank you. I never thought it would touch a nerve. Never in my wildest dreams. But yes. it did. And I'm just grateful. It, I'm so grateful it, it gave people hope. It gave a lot of designers the, the need to design again. And then it gave birth to part two, which you yes. will be talking about later. And it gave birth, part two gave birth to part three. Yes. So, so it, be, it has become something that even I myself could not believe would happen. Okay. Now, if, uh, if uh, with your permission, I would like to call on two of our guests from the Dis Fashion Designers Council of the Philippines. And uh, these are Vic Barba, who is one of your closest friends also in the design world, as well as Doji Batu, who is the president of the Davao Fashion and Design Council Foundation. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, Doji. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yo, it's an Welcome honor. From the south. Yes, and uh, I'm very excited because you you represent uh, a very important segment of the industry. Uh, Davao is uh, the center of fashion design in in Mindanao, and you're heading the group there. Uh, how is your group coping? with the pandemic and with what's going on right now? Well, uh, we are coping, but quite difficult, but really. Yes. Uh, as Davao is still in mourning, uh, probably until this summer. But we are trying our best to find solutions and working it out in our level because um, I think the government, so the most helpful product as of now are, are like masks or like personal protective apparels. We also try to diversify to really the uh, uh, non-related enterprise just to get the income going. And so Davao Fashion and Design has um, culture, heritage, and identity as drives for our niche in the industry. We still work with our um, communities like the Bagobo Tagabawa in Toril, Davao City, Mandaya of New Bataan in Davao de Oro, Tagakaulo of Malita in Davao Occidental, and the Maranao of the Arkat Lawanan Group of Marawi. We still have those um, communities that we are helping. Yes. So aside from it being a business, in, the, in your area, you're also working with the indigenous groups. Right. Yes, we do. We we are working with um our indigenous group, also with the help of the local government units. Yes, we okay. are in partnership um to ensure our programs also. So we have like uh. Well, it seems he's having uh, some issues. Uh, it's a bit choppy. You're coming in choppy, Shem. Don. Yeah. Um, we, uh, um, our projects, are, um, which is now a city ordinance also. Uh, yes. For example, our Anvil Award the Fashion Week and Davao, which is uh -huh. our flagship project for our Davao Design World Series Pro 
Okay. Program. We're going to get back to you, Dodgy, in a while. Um, it, it's now an ordinance for a uh, grant, which is, which is granted an aid. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get back to you, Dodgy, uh, in, a, in a while. Um, welcome, Vic. How are you? Ladies and gentlemen, we're now joined by Vic Barba. He's one of Manila's uh, very resilient fashion designers and certainly uh, one of the stalwarts of the Manila fashion scene. Welcome, Vic. Hi, Tito Gracie. I hope Welcome, you can hear Vic. me. Yes, loud and clear. But you're coming in loud. Well, um, Hello, Vic. Can't hear you. You can't Everything hear Everything froze. Oh. Everything froze. Well, it's a, there's a bit of a technical issue, Jackie, that we're experiencing. Nevertheless, um, I think that in a while, uh, we, when, when the connection and the signals become normal again, we'll call them back in. But we've got two lovely ladies with us from the group that handles fashion accessories. And this is a very exciting set of ladies we have. First, I'd like to welcome Ms. Carissa Cruz Evangelista of Beatrice and a member of FAMPH. Carissa, are you online? Hi, Carissa. Hello, Tita Gracie. Good afternoon Hi. and welcome. Hi, Jackie. Thank you for having me here today. Yes, and I'd also Good like afternoon. to call. I want. I wanted to greet your viewers for. Oh, yeah, go ahead, please, Carissa. Go ahead. Okay, I'd like to uh, thank you for having me here today uh, for for Beatrice Accessories and for the Fashion Accessory Makers of the Philippines, and greet everyone at uh, at V eighty one. I know that this is worldwide, so this is a great opportunity that you're giving us today. Thank you very much, Tita. You're very welcome. And now I'd like to call on our guest all the way from Mindanao, Miss Gina Nebrida T, designer and owner of Mindanao-based brand Agsam Fashion Fern and a member of AFAMPH. Good afternoon, Gina. How are you? Hi. Thank you for having us here. Thank you, Jackie, for being a catalyst as well for making this happen. Such an honor and pleasure to, to be part of this um, live show with you together with Carissa. Yes, um, and these two dynamic ladies, Jackie, are, are very fantastic representatives of the design world, focusing on fashion accessories. Now, how important is the accessory segment in the fashion industry, Jackie? Could you give us an idea? Well, it, it completes the look. Wouldn't you agree? Um, Yes. You can go out without wearing shoes. I need to put something so I need a bag. If I were yeah. a, 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 a lovely woman, which I hope I can be in another lifetime, I would want to have a nice necklace, nice earrings, even glasses are accessible. So yeah. it completes the look. It, it makes you feel better about yourself. So to yes. me, that's and very think, important. Yes, and I think that these two ladies represent uh, two very important companies in the industry. I understand, Gina, that you are using a very unique material in your designs. Could you tell us a little bit about the Agsam fern? Actually, I'm, I'm wearing one right now. So I have to walk the talk as well. So um, Agsam Fashion Fern, I named the company Agsam Fashion Fern because my my product lines, so my my accessory line is actually made of a fern plant that's endemic and abundant here in our province in Surigao. I'm actually here in Surigao since the lockdown, and what makes it very unique um, is that it is made by indigenous women. Most of them are Mamanua weavers, and they're using a uh, weaving heritage which is 45 years old already. So a lot of my weavers are grandkids of those who started it 40 years back. Fantastic. That's a great product story. And I, I, I swear, from now on, I'm really going to use local accessories because I believe in the initiative. And I know that you represent these fashion accessories coming from Surigao, which is a province that 
well, at least most of the consumers here in Manila would not even think about. But you have brought that Agsam firm right. to a level that is already yeah. recognized abroad. So I am so proud and honored to be to right. meet you and to have you in our show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Carissa, you also represent. I've seen some of your designs. And, you know, I, we, I'm, I'm telling you, Jackie, if you see her designs, you will want to buy up a lot <laughs> because they're so cute and they're, they're so fashionable, very colorful. Carissa, could you tell us a little bit about Beatrice and what is your design philosophy? There's a little bit. Of well, I, uh, there's like two aspects of Philippine design. There would be there would be things that are very natural and very organic, something that uh, a lot of browns, a lot of uh, creams. But then there's also the colorful side of us, like the fiesta side. And I guess that's yeah. the part that that I relate with when when I work with the people designing with me for Beatrice. So it's like this. The colors of our soul, just very beautiful, like melding together, and then, but with a very different modern aesthetic. That's why um, people from Europe and the U.S. and also Japan end up um, also following our brand. Yes. So it's been quite a journey, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to bring the brand on stage. Well, for the benefit of our viewers and listeners who are in the U.S in Europe, in the Middle East, Australia, and in the rest of Asia. Remember these two names because they, you, you may just see them in the next uh, fashion show or the next accessories design show or trade show. Um, both of them showcase their products abroad and uh, we are really proud of them and they, okay. they are really an interesting and very creative set of women. Jackie, you have, you have Put yourself in a in a very good company today with these two ladies. Oh yeah, remember I have five sisters. So <laughs> women women to be women rule my family, and and I've always wanted to be you know it's really nice to have women around because yeah. they can rule the world. Yes, and if I'm not mistaken, Carissa was the girl who called you up to put together. An, a group, right? Uh, like to put the fashion designers and accessory makers together, right? Well, yeah, this is the story. So uh, after the video, uh, I think Gina saw the video, uh, saw, the, saw the post of Amina, and I think they called Carissa. Carissa called me and asked me if they could uh, do some, if I could do something for the fashion accessory maker. So that's how. Uh, they did the video, and in the process, you know, Carissa, we call her superwoman. She gave this brilliant idea. Why not form a coalition that put together the entire <laughs> fashion industry under one umbrella organization? Yeah. That's monumental. It's really monumental. But I'm I'm grateful that there is somebody like women like Gina and Carissa who can, you know, I'm I'm very laid back. And I'm very, I'm just happy to be at home. But when Carissa came back into my life, I've known her from way, way back. It opened a new world again for me. Yes. And, the, and then the Philippine Fashion Coalition was born because of the brainchild of my guests tonight. And I am truly very proud of all of you. Um, I think we have now on the backstage our guest from Cebu. So ladies, excuse me for a while and I will introduce our guest from Cebu. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so proud that this afternoon, uh, this evening rather, we are joined by the president of the Fashion Council of Cebu, Mr. Philip Rodriguez. There he is. Hi, Philip. Anyway, while waiting for Philip, yeah. Dayton, I've known Philip for also quite a long time. Uh, he is a, a fashion for in Cebu. Uh, he actually brought me to Cebu, where I did my very first show in Cebu. 
And then wow. he also brought me all, all over Korea, all over Taiwan. But this was in the last century. So that's how long we've known each other. Well, um, you, you're, you're in a unique position in the fashion industry, Jackie, because of your experience uh, in putting up fashion shows. Uh, it's sad that we lost Philip again. So, uh, you know, the internet connection is rather unstable today. However, I'm sure he'll be logging back on. So, Jackie, that, sh that first show in Cebu with Philip Rodriguez, what was that? Um, when did that happen? And, and how did your uh, relationship with, creative relationship with Philip uh, start? It actually started here in Manila. Uh, I think there was a there was a big show that being done by the Professional Mod Association of the Philippines, and they wanted a feature designer. So I asked them, "Why not bring in Philip from Cebu?" So, and then uh, I there was a big show that he had in Cebu way back in the eighties. So I came over, brought a lot of models with me, and I've always had fond memories of Cebu. I, I love doing shows all over the country anyway, but yes. that's really part of what we do. Yes. Um, uh, I'm, I know that in Manila, you have been part of some groundbreaking shows for a lot of designers. And uh, it's, it's, you, you have to come up with a unique uh, approach for each one, right? Each designer oh, yeah. has a so, uh, in terms of treatment and, and uh, how you can put the show together, it's always a challenge. It's never a formula, right? You always have to bring out the designer in your show. It's still their vision. So my challenge yes. or my job and responsibility is to make sure that what they had in mind, how they want to present it in terms of its mood, in terms of its movement, in terms of music, is always a reflection of their design philosophy, not mine, but yes. my designer philosophy. Yeah. Um, if Vic and Dodgy are backstage, maybe we can call them back in and let's talk about, let's do a deep dive into the FDCP. I hope they're backstage now. There's Vic. There's Vic. Hello, Vic. Can you hear us? Still the signal is... Again. Yeah. So with the... Have you done any shows in Davao with Dodgy, uh, Jackie? With Dodgy here in Manila, yes. But in Manila. Not in, he, in Davao... Was he part um, of the first would, video? Sorry? Was he part of that first video, Fashion for Healing? I actually asked him, but they were locked down in the farm. So they had no access oh. to anything. So yeah. that's, How about um, Philip? Philip was able to join. And Philip. He, he was, yeah. Yes, he was able to uh, send a video. How many how many designers were involved in that uh, first video? 29. 29? Wow. Oh. Yes, I wrote, well, I wrote to about 80, and majority really had no access to, because they were all quarantined in their own homes. So they could not go to their atelier. Um, it was hard, but we were able to manage to get 29. Okay, Doji's back on his back. Can we call in Doji and we can talk about uh, the Davao uh, fashion uh, community? There he is. Yay. Hi. Okay, Hi. So um, Jackie and I were just talking about uh, the Philippine Fashion Coalition. And uh, how how I, I'm so excited to know about that, and I'm curious to find out how do you think can the Davao Group, you being the president of the Davao Fashion and Design Council, how do you think Davao can now fo join forces with the rest of the country to resurrect the fashion industry? Oh, we we've always had a a good relationship with. Um with the uh, people from Manila and um, this, um, from Luzon and Visayas. Um, we've done shows also in Manila from the past. Um, we're still do, doing the um, Manila fame, and we do also the um, 
Panasonic Manila Fashion Festival with, of course, Direct Jackie. Fabulous. Well, I, I do know that Jackie is really one of the most sought after fashion designers. And truly, I'm so proud of him because he has truly made his mark. And also because he's so easy to work with. And I, you, you, when you're in a show and Jackie's the one managing the event, you can rest assured that your designs will be showcased properly, especially during like a week like Philippine Fashion Week when there are so many fashion designers being exhibited. So, uh, and that's a challenge because, uh, for instance, the Davao Group and you in particular, uh, um, what's your experience like when you join a big show like that? Oh, Direct Chuck is so very, very accommodating. Um, like if we have a request, like, for example, our um, the music that we need to to show during our segment, um, he always accommodates our requests. Thank you very much, Direct. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, your, it's your collection, so it has to be a reflection of you. That's just my philosophy. Yeah, yes. but um, I th I would say that um, it's um, it's really not. It's so easy to to walk to you and to talk to you. And, um, we we never we never had a a bad experience really. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> same goes here. I mean, when Jack is in the tech booth and he's managing the show, you can you can be more relaxed. Because I know that being in the events business, if the director does not have a good control and does not have a creative vision that will be able to parlay all of the elements of the event together, especially fashion, because it, it can be you can you can make a mistake and it will not have the same impact, right? Very true. Very true. And you know, one of the things that I admire about both you and uh, Gina. Uh, Nebrida T, are that you bring out very unique indigenous uh, elements. So I'd like to call back Gina and maybe we can talk about the Mindanao design, fashion philosophy, and uh, let's get her into the conversation now. There you go. Uh, Jackie, we're, I'm so happy that we've got two of the best brains in the design industry from Mindanao. Uh, Doji's from Davao and Gina's from Surigao, and this is really a unique platform. Hi because again, Gina. Hi, Doji. Yes, and uh, two of the most creative people in the country, especially Mindanao, are here, and uh, somehow advocating for the local or the indigenous um, materials is very important because it really showcases not just the art and crafts, but also it enables local communities who are a vital part of fashion uh, industry to benefit from the fashion industry, right? Very true. Since um, our Davao Fashion and Design Council has culture, heritage, and identity as drivers for our niche in the industry. Yes, um, so we help out our communities. Um, we have actually the one that I mentioned before from from Davao City, Davao de Oro, Davao Occidental, and Marawi. Wow, it's a big, pretty big reach. Gina, on the oh. other hand, Surigao. Um, and we, and of course, Mindanao is so huge uh, in itself, right? And, and each area of Mindanao has a very distinct character. True, we are very, very... Yes, Gina, go. Go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, each job. Yes, yeah, I would. To ask. Go ahead, Dodge. Yes, um, um, we are very privileged and uh, to have the culture of Mindanaoan culture here. So um, I guess with all the designs coming from the cultures of Mindanao, very diverse, very colorful. Yes. And, and festive. For instance, if uh, the color palette of Mindanao is so interesting, because uh, just to, just to take a look at uh, the fabric in your part of Mindanao, the fabrics mm -hmm. that the members of Davao come up with and the textures um, truly must be so inspiring to work with that, right? 
Yes, it is very inspiring to work with the communities because um especially the weavers and the beaders. Yes. Um we it's not only helping them out to to for their own um income also in business, but also for the the culture and heritage to stay on because um they need to pass it on also to the young ones. Yes. Um Gina, are you how's your how how about the communities that you help in Surigao? Um, I know that the Agsam fern uh, is indigenous to your region, and uh, you did say that it's been passed on from generation to generation. Right, it's it's uh, it's it's been a uh, definitely a journey of inspiration since the time that I met them. Because when I when I saw when I discovered them, it was like six years. Ago, it, was, it was worn by so, and I was very curious about the intricacy of the design. It wasn't really uh, it didn't look commercially viable, but um, but I saw the intricacy and the precision on, on how it was woven. So in no time, I, I asked her where she got it. So I went to this parok. No? Uh, it's one of the it's a it's, it's a small parok here in our province. And when I discovered them, they were uh, they are a group of uh, indigenous women. They've been doing this for forty years, forty years uh, and counting already. It's just that when uh, their their wares are sold only within the Mindanao our region, specifically in Karata region. So um, when I started wearing them, it was just really for my personal consumption. And friends from Manila started noticing, it and they said, "Where did you get that?" So when I um, when I started selling to them, only you know without no without any profit at all. Um, it started um, getting noticed by a lot of my friends who are um, who love, who love fashion. And then the next thing I knew, uh, I was already um, invited in, um, in, in local events. So it's been a, a roller coaster ride with them. What really motivates me all the more to do this because I have a group of women who are really support and um, a lot of them have already improved their lives. Before they used to sell banana peel, or they would help their husbands, who so most of them are farmers. Right now, they're able to uh, lift the power. You know? I have two women who have already set up two side size stores, and she feels very, they feel very good about that. I have one who I have, um, I was able to bring to London last November. It was her first time to get out of Surigao, so from Surigao straight to London. So. Um, before the lockdown, I was supposed to fly to Germany to bring another woman, but because of the pandemic, um, it was put on hold. And then, yes, sorry. Yeah, it's unfortunate that the pandemic really affected uh, the industry, because normally this time of the year, a lot of trade fairs would be going on, like Fame and all the other international uh, trade shows. Um, but I think what's interesting also is the fact everybody's now interest, uh, interested to come back in the e-commerce world and even big trade shows are now in the e-commerce space, right? Jackie, uh, have, you, have you attempted to put together something in the e-commerce platform to help our designer friends? Um, well, we, it, it would have been nice if Dick was here, but because he initiated a Buy Filipino Facebook page that we hope all fashion, either designers, maybe apparel or accessories, uh, they can post and, and sell in, the, in that size. So it's a good way for you to be able to connect to a bigger audience in the pandemic. Um, it's, it's, if Vic and Philip are around, maybe we can try to invite them back on. Unfortunately, the tech, the internet connection today is rather rather uh, unstable so uh, i apologize for that uh and and welcome to the world of internet broadcasting and sometimes these these uh, problems do occur so uh if uh, dean if vic barba is back or philip yes why don't we bring on philip uh, excuse us gina and dodgy let's uh, try to bring in philip now there hi yeah. hi philip hi Hello, philip yeah Welcome, Philip. Uh, it's thank nice you so to be back much. again. <laughs> I, 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 for a while. Sorry. Thank you very much for finding the time to join us, Philip. 
Uh, as you know, my show reaches a lot of Filipino audiences in the U.S., in Asia, and in Europe. So I'd like it to give you a chance to tell us a bit about the how the Cebu fashion scene is going on at the moment and how the pandemic uh, has caused you to change your strategy. Well, at the moment, we're on our second episode of ECQ, so it's a little bit quiet and we're suffering a lot. I mean, like the first time we were prepared for it, we, we were, we were a go for it. No, I mean, like we, we, a lot of us went into production of PPEs because there was yeah. a, a shortage of PPEs. And as we prepare for the GCQ, we thought that we're going to be doing a new normal, but then unfortunately it has been extended. So, uh, we don't know yet what to do because uh, we can't keep on subsidizing um, salaries of our workers, of course, uh, from our own personal savings. So, yes. So it's we'll. Unfortunate thing. This is really unfortunate, but then uh, we just have to find ways. Uh, yes. So some of us have started to do other uh, little businesses in in the meantime. Yes. Um, with the production capacity that you have uh, and knowing that you are one of the pillars of the Cebu fashion scene uh, and, and uh, like I was telling Jackie earlier, the creative spirit cannot be controlled even during a time of crisis. I, uh, and certainly the Cebuano creative spirit is famous, no? not just in the world of fashion, but even in interior design. Furniture. Your, the innovations that come out of Cebu over the last few years has been very admirable. And um, given that, you know, given all of these things that you have going for you, in spite of this controlled environment of GCQ um, or, or ECQ, because I know that they've reinstituted it, um, how do you think the pandemic will affect your design approach? This is going to be a challenge for us, and I think it's about time that you should start finding something that we can locally source, like uh, making use of local materials. Maybe, well, of course, this is a little bit long range, but then maybe we can try to produce our own fiber so we can be distinctly Cebuano in terms of approach in, in our design. Yes. Yes, but that's yes. long term. Yes. But in the and meantime... That's, uh, yeah, that's, in, that's interesting because uh, if you cannot source it within the province itself, uh, hopefully with, with, your, with your coalition, with the Philippine Fashion Coalition, that the group of Jackie and Vic Barba and, and uh, G in Davao and all... I think what it might be interesting if that coalition can now bring the conversation to a national level because we really have to have a Bayanian spirit in place, right, Jackie? Oh yeah. Yes. So that, that's, that's the whole one point. of the yeah, that's uh, one of the long term plans of the coalition. And I was hoping Karisa is actually the better person to talk about it. Because one of the plans that we have uh, would be well, it's a dream that if we can really revive the textile industry back in our country, well, there is, but to now make it really available for everyone, especially for local designers, and make sure that the supply chain is properly addressed, yes. and that and that the dem because the demand is there. Yes, and I really, I really hope everything could be localized in terms of community. Because what is happening now, if you notice, is most businesses are are basically serving their communities and the villages around them, so the communities yes. around them. Yes. So I think uh, for short, short term plan, that's the short long term plan is to have a full blown Philippine textile industry again, which we had. Philip and yeah, Philip and I remember the days of Ramu. Or the days of Philippine cotton. There were those days in the seventies, and so why yes. not bring it back again? Why don't we? Why don't we invite back here, Philip? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Doji and Vic. Since we're talking about 
uh, major concerns among fashion designers. Uh, I see that Vic and Dodgy are back. Uh, can we invite also Vic? There you go. Here we are. Finally, we have the members of the Philippine Design uh, FDCP and Cebu and Davao Council together, Jackie. This is a feat. Because I think in the internet broadcasting world, this is the first time that members of the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao fashion groups are to all together in one show. And I only have to thank you for that, Jackie. Um, Vic, what do you say about uh, that statement that Jackie early, earlier mentioned about uh, using more indigenous fabric? or sourcing locally uh, from our brothers and sisters in the different provinces? I have I've actually been using, um, I'm from Ilocos, I'm very, I, I have easy access to the inner belt. And yeah. uh, it's a very interesting material because it's, it's a, a traditional fabric, yet uh, the prints of the inner belt is quite modern. When you look at the print, it's, um, you see that it's pop art. It actually wow. has, it's very visual. So this is the thing I like about it. And I've, I've ever since, ever since uh, I've been invited to do pop-ups and uh, things that are geared towards the Filipino market, I've been using the bell because as I've said, it's quite sustainable for me. I, I because I have access to these fabrics since I come from, from North no. where it is done. Yes, uh, I do remember that a while back there was even a book about Inabel and uh, a fashion exhibition to showcase the the different Ina, Inabel uh, designs. Were you part of that uh, initiative? I, I believe it was one of the senators previous many years ago that put that project together. I'm, I'm not part of the book, but I've seen the book. Yes, it's a good initiative to have it because we really need to, especially in this time that our weavers, our local weavers, um, um, need help to push to push yeah. their products. I think it's very valuable to use this because uh, if there's one thing that this pandemic has brought is is the awareness to use local, to buy local, to be loyal to local. Um, it's been said before, and I'm going to say again: we should, we should uh, really, really put 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 weight on using our own resources. Yes, that you just echoed what Philip said earlier about putting together, uh, using more indigenous materials and weaves. And I think Dodgy, you've also been actively doing that for your local weavers, and really your call to get all of these together to showcase uh, maybe bringing Philippine fashion a more na giving it a more national spin will uh, help to excite our consumers that um, you know we we can buy Filipino so you know and, yeah it's okay buy Filipino and really put Filipino fashion first yes um yes, yes um we are there we are very thankful that our local government unit here is very supportive of us the designers. Um, now our Davao city um, has uh, enacted into a city ordinance also that we have been given a grant in aid support for our work with our cultural um, communities. Now we, yeah. um, and we have projects now um, ongoing that um, we can, we have partnership with the uh, government industry and academe um through our fashion week in davao here in davao city which will hopefully go online also um, already starting um this year once uh, if the proposal is approved now this digital platform will have the following features we have a weaving gallery with a research based and community referred content from our researchers uh, made by the partners um, um academy to guide the designs and the MSMEs integrate the use of cultural content to creative produce. We also have a digital value chain operating system for the selected MSMEs with the traditional artisan entrepreneurs and mainstream yeah. designer entrepreneurs. Wow, well, we way, want to, yes. to go to Java and Yeah, <laughs> we, we would like it web-based and you know mobile yeah. phone configurated. 
Yes. Diba? But I, and that's true. Um, it's a challenge to put the fashion industry in the digital space. But what I'm so happy about what Jackie and Carissa and everybody's doing is that you now have started the first steps. And I know that it's a long-term thing and there's a learning curve that everybody has to go through. But taking the first initiatives, it, lo even, it even looks like Davao is so ahead because of all the in, uh, government back initiatives. Don't you think so, Jackie? Yeah, and you know, the, the key word here is together. And that's the only way we can all move forward together. Um, if I know, if I remember correctly, you know, my an, another friend of ours who's also part of the coalition mentioned that I think in Indonesia they have wear batik day, which is mandated by law. Imagine if we had the same, if we had something similar here in the Philippines, where it's mandated by law, so that we can preserve our culture that either wear Barosaya day or wear Barong day or just wear Filipino day. That would yes. that would really make a lot of difference. Sure. Um, actually, like when I was connected with the Cultural Center of the Philippines, every Tuesday was our Filipiniana Day, and yes, we had government. we had to wear our Filipiniana dresses or yes, outfits. I know the, if I'm not mistaken, in in it's, it's mandated by law now that all government offices, I think every Monday they should. Being Filipino, yeah. but what I'm hoping for yes. is the general population. Yes, really and, and make I want a lot to of difference. Right, I want to see also the variety, like from Ilocos. You've got the group of Vic and his connections with the Ilocos group, with the weavers and his designs, as well as um, Dodgy in the south. So you've got you can actually do a Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, and harness all of this in this uh, very interesting materials. Yes, that's a, a really, really nice dream, you know. I, I, I hope that will uh, come into fruition. Into fruition. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. Vic, uh, Jackie told me that you started a Facebook page called Buy Filipino. Would you tell us about that? Can you hear me? Tita Gracie, yes. you're quite choppy. Yes. You're asking yes, about the you. Buy Filipino page, yeah. Yes. I think I lost you. Can you, you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll keep talking because I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I, it's very choppy, but I'll keep talking because I could see the video. Uh, yes. During the pandemic, there was a, we were, we have a video group. We have a group called the video group. Um, and Jackie's part of it. And we were just once talking that why don't we just make a page that's dedicated to fashion? And that just started it all. And so we just, as the name implies, by Filipino, but it's dedicated, um, exclusively dedicated for Filipino fashion and, of, and, and beauty products and accessories, of course. And that started it all. I mean, we still need to garner, you know, some, some more movement, but it's quite well received with, we've been garnering conversions and, and some, some transactions through the page. So that's helping quite a bit. Well, I'm glad that the initiative is there. Um, it's a very good step to encourage and engage our consumers and to make them aware that our fashion designers from Manila is linked up with our designers and the creative community in Cebu and in Davao and in, in, in other parts of the country because this can, the only way we will survive is truly if we work together as one. Uh, one nation, Indeed. Let's, let's put that message there and also to make an effort for ourselves to wear a, a design in, uh, done by a local designer using local materials and really making it uh, a statement, making a statement that, yes, we are supporting Philippine fashion. Yes, right? we have to, you have to look at the history of how cultures are identified. It's either you get identified through your music, your architecture, your paintings, your visual arts, dance. But the most significant uh, representation of what a culture really is is costume, what you wear every day. 
So I really hope we can go back to the basics we're in. We really tap into our resources and make looking Filipiniana really good and very fashionable. Yes, because like if we see more people wearing Filipino designs and not just design uh, with contemporary styles, but using fabrics, looks, colors, textures from from our indigenous tribe. Because in other countries, when you see someone like in, in Japan, when you see people in kimonos walking down the street, and it's like natural in the landscape to see that, but here, we don't really see anybody wearing, let's say, a bio, barot saya or a barong. Well, barong for the men, yes, but it's it's already, uh, how would I say, watered down version. But, you know, if I would like to see more being really uh, culturally authentic, uh, maybe in terms of design and uh, textures and colors. So imagine if we ask the designers, let's say, this yeah. on June 12th, you can only come out with Philippine Yana clothes. Why or not? The for the whole month of December. Or every Friday is uh, wear Tuot Pinoy or Damit Pinoy oh, Day. God. Yes. Why not? Let's do that. Let's do something like that, Jackie. Because then our industry, our fashion industry will slowly become... We will revive and we can get people moving again. And let's even start with masks that look really indigenous, you know, because everybody's now wearing a mask. So maybe with little steps like that, like an Inabel mask or, you know, uh, uh, what do you think now? Yeah. Vic, do you have like an Inabel mask or something indigenous? Yes, I, I've done the Inabel mask. Uh, you know, studies show, because Inabel is cotton, studies show yes. that um, natural fibers used in masks are much, much better in protecting than using synthetic fibers. There because you of, go. Because if you, if you see, if you see the microscopic uh, fi the th thread, the thread itself microscopically, the thread of a, a natural fiber is undulated, Therefore, it gives it more, um, um, what's this? It gives, it, it's more, it's tighter. The weave gets tighter because of the undulation of the thread. Whereas composed to a polyester fiber, if you, you, if you see it microscopically, the fiber is quite smooth. Therefore, mas madili siyang pasuka ng whatever. So yeah. studies really show, and this is true, that, um, um, uh, natural fibers are much better in protecting uh, one, oneself if you use it for, for masks. Fantastic. Doji, could you show us some of your masks now? I love those colors. Oh, this one's like um, from Inaul. There you go. From Marawi. Inaul. Yes. So there, Jackie, it looks like um, the designers have already started their initiative with the natural weaves uh, and the indigenous weaves in their own designs. I guess this is nothing new. It's just something that we can really revive. Oh, there's Philip. Philip. No, it's, uh, no, it's, oh, uh, Grace, it's always been there. Uh, what, yes. what we just hope we can do now is really take it to a national scale. We're in... Uh, everybody really uses it because all designers have done their share and are doing their share in making sure that we promote local fiber and local yeah. sorry local textiles fantastic so there i think philip the answer that you're looking for in terms of local materials local textiles we've got the inabel in ilocos we've got the marawi weaves uh, from Mindanao, and then you're going to be sourcing in Cebu. I think your dream will come true, Philip, in terms of creating more indigenous uh, material for your passions. Uh, I'm also looking at uh, materials that we can probably develop in the future using uh, probably a mix of uh, abaca into and cotton into twill. 
abaca denim probably and then revisit the development of rami because um, yes. we used to have rami before and from there we promote uh farmers to get back i mean like, it's not just uh, so it can promote farming for agriculture with rami and then maybe we can make it into full scale or commercial scale type of uh, production and then uh, maybe for uniforms or for streetwear something that's more that can be global in terms of quality and it's not that the uh, our indigenous weaves it's always there it's always uh, you know but then for everyday use probably we can make let's go back to that era when we had rami Yes, you know, well, we were time using ago, them for table. True. Yes, actually, Philip, you many know. years ago when I was still working so, for this is where I'm looking. We had a division called Rami Tex, and and we were producing Rami in uh, it was a San Miguel investment many decades ago. Yes. And I hope we can decades review. Decades ago, shows our age. Yeah, <laughs> it really shows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> proudly a senior. I'm proudly a senior. But true, Rami is an indigenous fabric that can be that we can were be. Young then. We were young. <laughs> we're young. We're always young up here, <laughs> Philip. <laughs> anyway, uh, friends, <laughs> we will be right back. It's just about time for our first break. Uh, don't go away. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. We'll be right back after these brief reminders. We'll be back shortly with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie only here on V81 Radio.